Today in the Audio Hotline studio, I will be reviewing the MXL 2006. In this review, I'm going to take you through the basics of this microphone. We'll go through the specs. I will test the hell out of it so you know whether it's right for you. And after that, I will give you my review of the MXL 2006 if you want to stick around. But let's go ahead and jump in the DeLorean, take it back to 2006, and let's go ahead and start this damn review. What's up audio nerds, welcome to the audio hotline. As stated before, I have the MXL 2006 condenser microphone in the studio. You know, at this point, I've actually tried out quite a few MXL microphones, and one thing that's been pretty consistent, not always consistent, is the fact that I usually like MXL microphones, especially for the price. And speaking of price, this is an $85 microphone that you can find on Amazon. An affiliate link will be down in the description. As I'm sure you have noticed I do have a pop filter up. This is the Stenman Pro Screen 101. Today I am using my Zoom H6 as an audio interface into my MacBook Pro with the gain set roughly at about 48%. Let's go ahead and talk about what comes with this $85 microphone when you purchase it. When you purchase the MXL 2006 condenser microphone, you will get a nice hard plastic carrying case from MXL. As usual, you will get some documentation and some ads as you open the box. And oddly enough, I actually didn't receive an MXL sticker with this microphone, which is unusual. And once you open the hard case, you will see a shock mount. And within that shock mount, there are some extra elastics that come with this, which is always really nice just in case one of them breaks. And last, but most importantly, you will get the MXL 2006 XLR condenser microphone. When it comes to the accessories that come with this and the build quality, I mostly like it. I absolutely love the carrying cases that come with these microphones. I think that they are awesome. So that's definitely a plus. One thing that I'm kind of about when it comes to MXL microphones is the fact that their shock mounts are just kind of flimsy. It's really easy for this screw to come loose and that's one thing that I don't like about it. Also, I feel like the elastics just have a little too much give and they're really easy to get to fall off of these little hooks. Also, where is my damn sticker? When it comes to the build quality of the microphone itself, it kind of falls in line with other MXL condenser microphones. It feels slightly light when you lift it up, but the construction does feel pretty good. It's metal. I will say the grill does have a little bit of give, so it's just one of those microphones that you need to be careful with. I mean, I would recommend being careful with all of your microphones, but it is nice that it comes with the plastic hard case so you have a nice way of storing it and traveling with it so it won't get beat up. But overall, the build quality of the microphone is fine. The accessories and everything, pretty good deal for $85. Well, now that we've gone through some of the basic stuff about this microphone, let's go ahead and jump right into the specs. The MXL 2006 is an XLR pressure gradient condenser microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. This mic has a frequency response of 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz, an impedance of 150 ohms, a signal to noise ratio of 78 decibels, a max SPL of 130 decibels, and this does have a power requirement of 48 volts of phantom power, which can be plus or minus 4 volts. When looking at the frequency chart of the MXL 2006, you can tell that the bass does drop off a little bit. There are multiple dips and boosts in the mid-range, but I believe around 1K this thing starts to climb until it hits over a 10 decibel boost around like 9 kilohertz. This thing is very boosted. It even maintains a more than five decibel boost at 20 kilohertz. Well, now that we've gone through the basics and the specs of this microphone, let's go ahead and start testing it out. During these tests, I will use a pop filter sometimes and then other times I will not. Just so I can give everyone an example of what this microphone could sound like with and without a pop filter. All right, let's go ahead and start this off with a proximity test. If you like hearing spit crackle in your mouth so you get really close to the microphone, then here's how it's gonna sound. If you still want to get that weird mouth spit sound, but you don't want to spit right into your capsule so you get a pop filter, then here's how it would sound being really close to the microphone with a pop filter. I'm a little worried about this one. Maybe protect your ears on this. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. 
Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled penises. Yeah, I'm just gonna say it now. I definitely recommend a pop filter with this microphone. If you wanna get this microphone for YouTube gaming or anything where you're gonna be typing on a keyboard behind it, then here is how the background noise rejection is. If you talk into the MXL2006 like this, it sounds like this. If you talk into the side of the MXL2006, here's how it sounds. And if you talk into the back of the MXL2006, here's how it sounds. Now, if you want to use this microphone for podcasting or voiceover or anything where you want some post-processing on it, then here is how it could sound with just some basic plugins on it. Usually I put EQ, compression. I'll usually put a little bit of a noise remover on it for when the compression raises that noise floor. And then occasionally a de -esser. If I do use EQ, I will put the graph up on the screen so you can see what moves I made. Now, if you want to get a microphone for general use as well as your YouTube channel, and you don't want the microphone on screen during your YouTube videos, then here is how this microphone could sound about three feet away. Well, now that we've gone through the overview, the specs, and the testing, I'm going to go ahead and move on to my review of the MXL 2006. Wait a second. Did my hair get shorter? Is my facial hair super, super minimally longer? I mean, it's so minimal, so incredibly minimal because my facial hair is not that great, but I think it got a little longer and this got a little shorter. What, how did that even happen? Okay, fine. You caught me. I am recording this part a couple days later. Oh, you, you wouldn't have noticed if I didn't point it out? Cool. The reason that I'm recording this section a couple days later is because my ears were slightly clogged that day. My ears were a little off. So I decided to wait on the part where I give my review so I could listen back to the footage and like actually tell you how I truly feel instead of how I felt when my ears were a little off. And actually, I really like doing that. I actually might do that more often. So starting with just some of the basics of this microphone, I will say that the build quality of the microphone itself, I like it. I think it's good. The shock mount itself, not crazy about, but I love the carrying case. And for $85, I think that this feels good. Like it's good as far as build and accessories go. When it comes to the proximity effect of this microphone, I actually think it sounds pretty cool. So proximity effect was good. I will say that the plosives are rough on this microphone, especially if you do not have a pop filter or a windscreen. And I put this on just because some people are like, oh, you're using a pop filter or, oh, you're using a windscreen. I wish you would have used a pop filter or windscreen, whichever one I'm not using. They're basically like, I want you to use that one. I'm just kidding, I love you. So I decided to put this on so you get an idea of what both of them can sound like. But you definitely need some protection with this microphone. As far as background noise rejection, it's not good, but I'm not expecting it to be because it is a condenser microphone. I did notice that the cardioid pattern wasn't too tight. It definitely grabs quite a bit from the back and the sides, more so than even some other condenser microphones like it. But if you're careful about background noise or if you're in a treated room, you should be good with this microphone. If you're in a super reverberant room or you're gonna be typing on a keyboard behind the microphone, I don't think this is the mic for you. This microphone honestly slightly reminds me of like a Rode NT1A where it's pretty bright. And since this microphone kind of shares some characteristics of the NT1A of having like a hyped high end, I will say that I've recorded a lot of vocalists on the Rode NT1A. It was actually one of my very first microphones that I like really started recording a lot of vocalists with. And I love that microphone on vocalists. So I think that this would be a good option for singing, but with all microphones, it comes down to the tone of them as well as the singer. So this isn't a foolproof thing. Some singers may sound like crap on this. I accidentally bumped the microphone and actually the shock mount seems to do a pretty good job. And one thing about this microphone that's a little interesting is I actually get kind of a like broadcasty feel from it. That hyped high end reminds me even kind of the Rode Broadcaster. Can I talk about anything but Rode microphones right now? <laughs> Any other mic would be great. Thank you, me. But even when you get a little closer, it kind of has that broadcasty feel to it a little bit. 
So I actually think that this would be a really cool microphone for, you know, podcasting, broadcasting. I think that you could do some good voiceovers with it as well. It could be a really good beginner voiceover mic. And one microphone that this actually does remind me of is the Harlan Hogan signature microphone from MXL. I don't know for sure. Maybe they actually have this somewhere, but I wouldn't be surprised if they just like put his name on this microphone and tweaked it like a little bit because they do look very similar as well. But that microphone's $300 and this is $85. And every microphone that I've kind of compared it to today has been a lot more than $85. But I'm not saying that it's better than any of the microphones that I've mentioned. There's just some characteristics that remind me of those microphones. When I first plugged it in and kind of had the clogged ears, I actually didn't like it very much. But then I kept listening to it, pulled up a parametric EQ, kind of messed with it, and I was like, hey, like this thing could do some work. I do think that this sounds good, and I do think you could make it sound really good with just some post-processing with EQ. Little compression, couldn't hurt. Little de-essing maybe, bring those S's down since it is so hyped in the high end. But honestly, I do like this microphone more than I thought I was going to. And actually when I was looking at Amazon, B&H, Google, all the places that, you know, have reviews of this, I think that most of them were 4.5 out of 5 stars or higher at a majority of those websites. But honestly, um... I get it. I think it's a good microphone. And I think that the price is pretty reasonable for a microphone that sounds like this. And with all that being said, the grade that I give the MXL 2006 is an A. So yeah, I actually think this microphone is really good. I think it is worth the money. I do recommend it. But with that recommendation, I will say it obviously depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I don't think this microphone is right for someone who's going to be in a very lively, bad sounding room, especially if you're trying to accomplish something with very minimal room noise. But I do think this microphone could hit a wide variety of uses. If you like the sound of this microphone and it fits within your use case of things that I've said, then I would definitely think about getting it. However, if you're like a YouTube gamer that's going to be making a lot of background noise or in a podcast room with a bunch of other people, I don't think this is the mic for you. But other than that, I really like this mic. Thank you for watching this review of the MXL 2006. I hope you found it helpful and that it helped you decide whether you want this microphone or not. But most of all, I hope you had fun. Stay tuned for a lot more reviews. A lot of other videos will be coming out very soon. And also stay tuned for that 2K subscriber giveaway. It's going to be coming up pretty quick. But once again, thank you to all my subscribers. You are fantastic. And thank you for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you audio nerds. And next to time.